it is very very important for people to realize that perfectly asymptomatic healthy looking people could be carrying the virus and spreading it and that is why we see what we're seeing right now because there are a lot of healthy looking people walking around spreading the coronavirus and now everybody's getting sick it is really really important to keep your physical distance pretty much assume that anybody who you don't know and even people that you may know can potentially be carriers they may be in early stages asymptomatic so practice proper hygiene wash your hands don't touch your face now there are a couple of things happening in the states and in Canada as well that personally drive me crazy number one is face masks face masks so the public health officer in Canada and in the states previously certain general were recommending that people not wear masks which makes no sense and the reasoning was that if people have masks they'll start touching their faces more I'm not quite sure where that data came from but it just doesn't seem to make sense to me face masks are pretty standard in South Korea which is really an amazing job probably one of the best jobs in the world in trying to contain this virus face masks are now necessary in pretty much all European countries I don't know Austria for example you must wear a face mask if you go out into the public or if you go if you go to the grocery stores in Czech Republic Czechia you must wear a mask every time you go outside and it just makes sense if you have a barrier here if you breathe if you cough if you sneeze it goes in here it doesn't go out into the wall if you should you ever touch your face accidentally you're touching your mask you're not really touching the face itself um, so in the states now they're thinking about recommending wearing masks it's, it hasn't come to Canada yet I just don't understand why not everybody should have a mask and when I say face masks I mean just regular mask cloth anything something to cover your face don't hoard N95s uh, those medical grade masks please leave them for doctors for healthcare workers for severe situations in a hospital where there's a lot of aerosols but just for everyday simple use simple face mask cloth scarf whatever just cover your face it's that simple check out this following video this was this came out of Czech Republic Czechia um, and it just it just makes so much sense and a lot of doctors are sort of sharing it in their groups because this is simply so logical this is this is a no-brainer watch this we have an important message for all of you especially if you live in a country that is right now facing the new coronavirus the pandemic is growing exponentially in many countries But the Czech Republic is one of the few in Europe that has significantly slowed down the spread of the virus. In this video, we would like to tell you what we did differently. And mainly, we would like to help you to do the same. We are following social distancing and the rules stay at home. But others do that too. We also have a strict hygienic procedures. Others do that as well. But the main difference is everyone who has to leave their house has to wear a face mask. Everyone. I know, they may be told you that masks wouldn't protect you, but there are studies proving that even a homemade mask can be partially protective. Partially. Any protection is essential today. But now the more important thing. Masks fundamentally prevent the transmission from you to others by sneezing, coughing, but also breathing. And many people are the most contagious before they start showing symptoms. So, when we both have a face mask, I protect you, you protect me, and we are both safe. Based on recent data, we know that population-wide use of masks is essential for suppression of the outbreak. According to our professional experience, a simple homemade mask can prevent up to 100% of the spread of potentially infected micro droplets. The more people use masks, the less virus can be distributed and fewer individuals are exposed. Just a few days ago, people were laughing at those who wore masks. But some people knew about this positive effect and started to share this information across social media. The message grew fast through artists, influencers and others. I know, face masks aren't in stores, right? But something incredible happened. People started making homemade masks and giving them to others for free.
Many companies, theaters, or even retirement houses changed their buildings into sewing rooms, and thousands of people started to sew masks at home. So we know that face masks work, and it has been repeatedly confirmed by scientists. We know that it is possible in just three days to provide face masks for 10 million people in one country. And we know that here we have fundamentally repressed the infection. Please share this knowledge and help us to change as many countries as possible. Take a picture with your face mask on and share it with the hashtag masks for all. It can really save lives. And remember, I protect you, you protect me. I recommend to all fellow ministers and governments to implement population-wide use of face masks, even homemade ones. Today we see that this was one of the most important decisions that we have made. And if it helped here, it can help anywhere. Will wearing masks help? Only time will tell, but I just don't see a downside to it. Next thing I wanna talk about are all the measures different governments are putting in place in an effort to slow down the spread and flatten the curve. Here in Canada, we're in week two of social distancing. A lot of non-essential businesses have been closed. We're closed, I'm here just uh, doing virtual consultations and seeing some essential patients. And every day, these restrictions become more and more severe and they keep getting more and more severe as more people become identified as positive, as more people die. And this is extremely frustrating to me because we know what's coming. Look at Italy, look at Spain. And we knew this was coming the moment Italy exploded a month ago. When Italy exploded and people realized this thing's out in the wild and it's being spread by asymptomatic people, it was time to shut everything down and stop the spread. But instead, we're slowly, slowly increasing and inching up restrictions. In Canada, we had enhanced screening at the border, which really was just a little questionnaire. When you come to the border on the computer, you just go click, 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 click. Yes, everybody just pushes yes, 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 or no, 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 and get on. I remember when I came across the border, uh, the border agent asked me no questions. There was no temperature testing. They were not really asking where I'm coming from, if I have any symptoms. I just went through the border. And this has been happening up until very recently. It made the news when uh, I think it was Minister of Health or someone in the government or, or, or someone in police said that there's enhanced screening when people coming through the border said, well, no, there is no enhanced screening. I don't know what's happening right now. Um, the other thing was people were coming into the country. We knew it's out there in Europe. But the people kept coming in and there was no recommendation for self-isolation when you come from, the, uh, from outside of the country. And I think to this date, a significant proportion, no more than 50% of our positive cases are from out of country travel. The other part is community spread, which is now inevitable, it's in the community. But still, it should have been caught before it came into the country. We knew it's coming, we knew it's out there. I'm not talking about shutting down the country. I'm thinking about quarantining people that come in. People that came out of the country should have quarantined themselves for two weeks. Strict quarantine, not optional. It wasn't until a few days ago that they actually made it mandatory that if you come out of the country, outside of the country, you must go straight home. Don't stop anywhere. Don't go shopping. Go home and quarantine yourself. If you don't, you're breaking the law. This wasn't until just a few days ago. This should have been in place weeks ago, maybe a month or more ago. And these restrictions are becoming more and more severe as our numbers keep going up. And this is what's I, what I find frustrating. We know they're gonna go up. We know that we're on a path to Italy. Let's stop it. Put a lockdown in place. So now in Ontario, we have non-essential businesses being shut down. Have you seen the list of essential businesses? It is so long, it's ridiculous. That's not a shutdown. That's all they're doing is just harming the economy and not really stopping the spread. They, they're slowing it down a little bit, but you need to put a stop to this because more and more people will die. Yesterday on Kane TV, we were being advised that we should really stay home, go out maybe once a week to get groceries, otherwise stay home. It was advice. People don't follow advice. There were stories about people out going in parks and enjoying the beautiful weather and not really observing social distancing. 
it doesn't work unless you put firm policies in effect people will ignore them people will be going up and about people will be mingling and you will continue to spread the virus and people will die we need more testing we need to know who's positive who's not and we really need to enforce social distancing there's no other way around it unless the politicians just accept the fact that everybody's going to get the virus and we're going to lose some people and that's about it on a positive side i want to remind everybody that even though this virus is spreading like wildfire 80 percent of people get the virus will have so-called mild symptoms which may be fever aches and pains a cough but will recover the other 20 patients 20 percent may need to go to the hospital and of those people some will end up in icu and on ventilators I do have some not so happy news or not so happy facts as well and that is it seems that people that end up on the ventilators people that end up needing to be ventilated have an 80 percent mortality only 20 percent of people that go on a ventilator will end up coming off a ventilator so please try to avoid getting sick and ending up on a ventilator do your part don't get sick don't get other people sick and this is the important part this is why COVID-19 is so bad is because it spreads through people that seem to be asymptomatic. You don't have to be coughing and sick and feverish to be spreading the virus. You can be perfectly healthy. And that is why it's exploding everywhere because we had a lot of perfectly healthy looking people walking around not knowing they were sick, contaminating everybody and getting themselves sick as well later on. So protect yourself, protect people around yourself Okay guys, so that's it for my mini rant for the day. Please stay safe, keep your distance, wash your hands, don't touch your face. If you can, wear a mask and uh, stay safe. I uh, get a lot of questions about this uh, mask that I posted. Uh, one question was, should we only be wearing masks when we are sick? And the answer is absolutely not. The whole problem with COVID is that people who don't seem to be sick, who seem to be asymptomatic, are spreading the virus. So just because you feel good doesn't mean that you don't need to wear a mask. You could be sick. Your sickness symptoms may be just coming on board. You don't realize it, but you spray the virus. Now. So that is the whole point of the mask. Stop spreading the COVID-19. So guys, if you're going to go out, like if you're in a park in the middle of nowhere by yourself, you don't need a mask. But if you're going to go out where you're going to walk past people, you're going to go grocery, like grocery shopping. shopping. Yeah, you're yeah. going to go to a store and you walk past other people. Please do wear a mask, even if you think you're perfectly healthy. Let's start wearing masks. I think they're helpful. If they're not helpful, they will definitely not hurt you or anybody else. So you have nothing to lose. And then the issue right now is that some people cannot find masks. If you can't get a mask, improvise. Scarf, veil, cloth, uh, whatever you can use um, just to cover up your breathing, potential coughing and sneezing. That's simple. And now we are finished seeing uh, the few patients we had to come in. Jessica's left. I'm here in the clinic by myself. So the mask came off. I don't need a mask. There's nobody here. I'm here by myself. Good morning, guys. Welcome back. It is Friday morning and I'll be working from home today. Just like everybody else, I'm at home watching the news, seeing the latest numbers coming in. I just keep going up and up and up, um, which is not really that unexpected. It's not that worrisome because we know the numbers will keep going up for a while after we started doing the social isolation protocols. But we've been doing this for a couple of weeks now, so hopefully we'll start to see the effects and hopefully we'll start to see the numbers leveling off uh, instead of just spiking up. So hopefully everybody's doing their part. Wash your hands, don't touch your face, keep your distance, don't gather in groups and try to avoid touching things. Try to stay home as much as you can when you go out, go out when you have to and just keep your distance from other people. And of course, don't forget to wear a mask. Masks for all. Uh, I was just watching the news and I see that the King Prime Minister, uh, Justin Trudeau, is still resisting calls for generalized nationwide stay-at-home order. I'm guessing their reasoning is that things are not bad enough yet to do that. But look at Italy. Look at Spain. Look at what's happening in the States. 
we're waiting until it gets bad enough that it really has to happen. But why wait? Why not just do it now? Let's get it over with. We've been partially shut down for two weeks. People like me have been completely shut down for two weeks. My employees are gone. Um, our economy is suffering. And we're not really doing drastic measures. We, we, we're asking people politely to please keep your distance. Well, that doesn't really seem to work. Toronto government officials have asked people to politely to keep their distance. And what happened these past few days was nice and sunny. People were out in a park. That's a nice thing, but they were out in groups too close together. That is not social physical distancing. Sometimes you just have to tell people, you gotta stay home. Stay home for two weeks. It wasn't until just recently that people coming out of the country into Canada were told that they must stay home. They were asked to politely stay home. The virus doesn't spread magically from person to person. It spreads through contact, either direct contact or me spitting out or spewing out corner particles that settle on the surface and then you come, you touch the surface and then you touch your face. That's how the virus spreads. Don't touch things. Don't touch your face. Wash your hands. Put a mask on so if you accidentally touch your face, you're touching a mask, not your face. And keep a distance from other people. Because there's some thought that maybe, just maybe, when people speak, they're spewing out some virus particles. And so it could be in a short distance spreading through air. So keeping a two meter distance is a good thing. Yesterday I spoke about the value of masks and the controversy around them. Most, most countries around the world recommend wearing masks. United States is changing their tune. I think today they can announce recommendations on wearing the mask. In Canada, we are still being told not to wear masks, which makes not a lot of sense to me. Uh, most people agreed with me. There were a few people that brought up a few points which I'd like to address. So let's talk about masks and benefits of wearing a mask. So people have heard of the N95 masks. It means they hold a 95% of small particles that go through. These are masks that are really for healthcare professionals that are out there on the front lines dealing with potentially COVID positive patients and really need absolute protection. This, this is really, really necessary. And these masks should not be hoarded by general public. Walking down the street, staying at home, going to the grocery store, you do not need an N95 mask. This is for somebody who's face to face with someone who's very sick and is potentially aerosolizing the COVID particles. For you as a general public, the mask is beneficial two ways. One, it's covering your face. So if you accidentally reach out and touch your face, you're touching your face, you're going to touch the mask. Two, just gives you a little bit of protection. If you are coughing, you're not coughing out and spewing corner particles all over. And if people around are coughing, maybe it doesn't go directly into your face. Now true, air and particles can go around from the sides. It's not airtight. But again, you don't need an airtight uh, mask walking down the street or going to the grocery store. Take a look at the following graphics. Dr. Fauci in the States was asked about the masks and his uh, uh, way of describing is, don't think of mask as a replacement for social isolation, social distancing. Think of it as an add-on. You should still maintain your distance, wash your hands, do all those things. And the mask is a little extra layer of protection. A lot of people have said that the masks are out, they can't get them. Potentially you can get them online, but a lot of people have been improvising, creating all kinds of barriers just to cover up your face. And having something is better than having nothing. Another objection I heard is that a lot of people don't know how to properly use masks. They will have a false sense of security, when in fact they're gonna be actually hurting themselves. So I'm gonna show you how to properly use a mask, how do, you, how do you properly put it on, and what to do with a mask. There's different types of medical masks. There's some surgical masks. Typical ones have little straps. Simple ones have a little elastic band that you just put behind your ear. Very simple. All masks have a front and a back, the inside and the outside. And they have the top, which has a little bit of metallic piece in it that you can bend. So you can bend it around your nose, just like this. To try to figure out which is the front, which is the back, typically the front usually has the brand name or something on top which you don't have on the inside. Also, the masks have folds and the front, the folds are kind of looking down on the inside there this way. So when you talk, 
air droplets, spit, whatever goes in and catches in there. So this is the, the side that faces your face and this one faces away from you. These masks are meant to be single use. In today's environment, this may be the only mask you have and it, you, may, you may want to try to make it last more than just a single use. Um, once this mask becomes dirty, it's probably not good, can, you know, can have a lot of gunk and dirt and whatever else, but try to make the most of it, keep it clean, um, try not to touch it too much, don't get dirt and food and whatever else in there, uh, so it can last longer. That being said, understand that these masks are not meant for continual reuse. If you have nothing else, you have nothing else, it may be better than something, but try to keep it clean. Now for the general public's purpose, really this mask is really just a physical barrier. This is not really a medical mask. You're not in a medical environment. So a mask that you're wearing when you're just walking down the street, if you're going down to the, to the grocery store, you know, th this can last you a while. So if you have one of those masks that has an elastic band here, very simple, you put it behind your ear, pinch it around your nose, so you take the metallic part which goes on top, pinch it and put it behind your ear. This particular mask that has strings, you tie. Very simple, the way I normally do this is I pinch it around my nose, I, I tie the top, or my surgical cap, which I would be normally wearing, so nice little bow tie, and then I do my bag. And here we are, so I have my mask on now. This mask is acting to be like a little barrier when I'm speaking, if I'm talking, if I'm spitting, it's being caught in here. There's gaps in here, air can go in. So if this was an airborne virus, this mask is not gonna do much. Healthcare workers that are on the front line dealing with potential causative positive patients are facing patients that may be coughing, may be spewing, uh, when patients are being intubated, there's a lot of aerosols coming out. These people need to have airtight masks. That's where the N95 comes in. That is why it's important that people in the front lines have the N95, so you don't need an N95 unless you are at the front lines with people coughing and sneezing in your face. So again, for you, the general public, to be able to go out on the street, to go to a grocery store, you just have a physical barrier. And that is why if you don't have a mask, you can improvise, wear a scarf um, or some sort of cloth, something just to protect your face, that stuff coming out of you is being caught up and stuff coming at you, punish comes here. And more importantly, you don't touch your face. You touch something dirty and then you wanna to touch your face, rub your nose, bad move. But this will hopefully protect you because you're not touching your face directly. But again, this is just a additional measure. Number one, Keep your hands clean, wash your hands regularly, don't touch your face, keep your distance from other people. Two meters seems to be the safe distance. Best of all, stay away from other people. Try to maintain the quarantine or self-isolation. Stay home unless you really, really have to go out because that's the only way to really stop the virus in its track. The big deal about coronavirus is that it's spread by people who are otherwise asymptomatic. People who look perfectly healthy, maybe in early stages, and they're spreading the virus. And there's probably a lot of people out there who don't become symptomatic at all. They get the virus, they, they have so mild symptoms, they don't even realize they have them, and they recover completely. And these are the people that, maybe you could call them super spreaders, they go everywhere and spread the virus everywhere. That is why the numbers are exploding. Well, that's why they explode in, in Italy, that's why they explode in the States, because it's been going around by otherwise asymptomatic people. Plus, it's so easy to spread, you know, just go somewhere, you touch your face. So people that are otherwise asymptomatic may think, I don't need to wear a mask. Please do. Let's assume everybody has the virus just to be safe. Now again, what happens if you don't have a mask? Any cloth car will do. Wash them regularly, uh, keep them clean, Cover, your, cover up your face, prevent yourself from spitting out stuff and from touching your face. You really have nothing to lose by covering your face. And although weeks ago people may have laughed at you, today they'll probably look at you like, hey, he's smart or she's smart. Today it's more like you being socially responsible. It is the right thing to do. Okay guys, uh, please stay safe. If you're in Canada, Please stay home. Don't wait for Prime Minister Trudeau to tell you to stay home. 
we know very well, we know exactly what is going to happen if we don't take drastic measures. Italy, Spain, New York City. This is what happens when the virus goes rampant. Why wait until it gets really, really bad? Why wait? Now, in the meantime, the scientists are working on, on a vaccine. The uncomfortable truth is, though, that until this vaccine comes out, all we'll ever be able to do is suppress the curve. And it's going to be a while before this vaccine comes out. So until everybody can get immunized and have immunity to this virus, we will need to implement all these stringent policies to prevent the virus from exploding. Because no matter how well we suppress the curve, unless everybody's immunized and everybody's vaccinated, as soon as you take the foot off your brake and people start getting back together, the virus will explode again. So it will be a while before life gets back to normal. Be ready for it. Be prepared for it. It is not the end of the world, but it's going to be a long, long while. I'm going to finish off with one little thing. I just, I'm sorry, I just cannot help myself. But I have to point out, look what happened to the world when we don't have one vaccine. Now imagine if we had any vaccines. No polio vaccine. No smallpox. No rubella. But there's still people out there who are anti-vacciners, anti-vaxxers. What can I say? I'll leave that one for you to ponder on. And one last thing. There's so many conspiracy theories going around about this COVID-19 vaccine. It is ridiculous. Guys, don't waste your time with all these, all these conspiracies. No matter where it came from, it needs to be dealt with. Americans are blaming China. China's blaming Americans. Russia's blaming Americans. Russia's blaming Chinese. It's just going all around. Um, there's all these secret labs and all this nonsense. Um, this is no time for conspiracy theories. This is time to get on top of this virus and control it. It really doesn't matter where it came from. It's here. It's hurting people. We need to create a vaccine and we need to protect the vulnerable population.